Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. For today's Mini Tip Monday, I've put together a list of five essential tips for beginners getting started with Fusion 360. I've been teaching Fusion 360 for a few years now, and I've taught in multiple settings ranging from maker spaces to college courses. This has allowed me to see the areas that tend to trip up beginners and cause them to stumble or get stuck. So I decided to put together this five essential tips guide. I actually threw in an additional tip, which we're gonna call a bonus tip because five tips plus a bonus sounds better than six tips. Plus you'll wanna stick around for the bonus tip because it's pretty valuable. All right, let's go through them. Tip number one, use a three button mouse with a scroll wheel. Do not use a trackpad to design. It hurts my soul when I see people trying to design with a trackpad. It literally gives me anxiety. Just don't do it. Using a mouse is going to make your life much easier with zooming, panning, and orbiting in the whole entire design experience. Trust me on this one. Tip number two, zoom in. This is another big mistake I constantly see beginners do. When creating a sketch, they will be zoomed out so that they barely see what they are doing. This is a recipe for making silly mistakes. When you're zoomed out, it's easy to select the wrong line or not draw your line straight, snap to the wrong point, you get the picture. Make your life simple by getting in the habit of zooming in to fill your entire screen real estate with your design. Tip number three, the light bulb. This is the cause of much panic for beginners. You spend hours creating a design and all of a sudden it does a Houdini on you and disappears. Don't panic. The first place you want to look at is whether your light bulb is toggled off and toggle it back on. You can accidentally toggle these off. And in the case with sketches, Fusion will sometimes automatically toggle them off after you create a sketch. If you ever lose your model or sketch, look to here first before restarting an entire design. Also, remember you have access to your undo button just in case you do accidentally ever delete your design. Tip number four. Implement the click and release method when sketching. Students coming from other design software may be used to clicking, holding down the button, and then dragging the mouse. In Fusion 360, you're better off clicking and releasing. For example, to draw a circle, we would left click and release to set our center point. Move our mouse cursor out, enter our diameter, and press enter. You can also click release, and then click again to create the circle, and then come in and add your diameter. Tip number five, hit escape to get out of a tool. This is a common mistake I see students make, failing to escape out of a tool. Let's say you use the trim tool to trim away a line and then decide you want to add a dimension to a different line. If you go to select the line without first hitting escape, Fusion will apply the last function to that current selection. In this case, you would end up with an unwanted trim. So you want to get in the habit of always hitting escape when you are done using a tool. Okay, now for the bonus tip, sketch constraints. This is a big one that will get you if it hasn't yet. Sketch constraints can be your best friend or your worst enemy. The problem is that sometimes we accidentally set constraints without realizing it, and this can cause errors down the line when we try to modify our sketches. Here's an example. I'm gonna draw two lines. And let's say I want the angle between these two lines to be 120 degrees. So I'll hit D for dimension, and I'll click this line and then this line. Click where I want to put my angle, and go ahead and type. Uh, I can't because I get this error saying, adding this dimension will over-constraint the sketch. Choose OK to create a driven dimension. And I'll click OK, and it tells me that that dimension or that angle is 90 degrees, and I can't change it. So this is something that will get beginners and it's very frustrating because you're trying to put an angle here and it doesn't let you. Well, the thing to keep in mind is always look for these little white symbols. So you can see there when I made that sketch, it automatically placed a horizontal slash vertical constraint here, in this case vertical, and a 90 degree constraint here or a perpendicular constraint from this line to this line. So if I want to change that angle first, I have to go in and delete this angle here, and then I have to delete these constraints. So let's say, for example, I want this line to stay straight and I want to move just this line down here. So what I would do is click on this perpendicular constraint and hit delete. Now I can go with the dimension. So I'll hit D and click on both lines. And now if I try to do 120 degrees, 
it'll go ahead and move this line here for me. So let's undo and let's say I want this line now to move and this line to stay straight. What I would do is in this case I would delete both constraints. So I select them and delete them. And I would set a horizontal constraint on this line here. So I'll grab my horizontal constraint here, set it, and in D for dimension and now I can click both lines, choose where I want to put my angle and let's do 120 and now I have that angle set. So just a tip here to keep in mind, sometimes these little constraints are placed unintentionally. Uh, always keep on the lookout for them and just know you can always go in and delete them if you're getting that over constraint message. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Also, if you have your own beginner tip that you found helpful, please leave it in the comments below for all of us. All right, as always, you can always find more content on my website at desktopmakes.com. All right, guys, I'll see you next week.